I so I decided to start trying to film myself now rather than trying to work on the old project that I am still working on because I don't think I'm going to be done anytime soon. I'm too slow at it. And I'm too new at it to be fast and to upload on any kind of schedule. So I've admitted defeat and I thought I would record a log today. It's really, really hard because my body's not cooperating very much. I think I fell asleep around midnight, woke up at five, and a lot of nausea and pain. I still have it, but I think my meds are starting to kick in. I really hope that's not vomit. I really hope that's not vomit. This is a cute little doll from a friend among many other dolls. It's been a while now since I got transferred from the other hospital. And, uh, it's been tough. Radiation. There's 30 rounds of radiation to go for. I've only been able to go for eight so far. I do think maybe some of the pain has gone down, but I don't know right now. I'm not too sure. I don't want to make assumptions or jump the gun right now. It's just been hitting me that I miss home. I miss my loved ones, and also, I miss being normal, my old normal, and I just hope that I'll be able to gain as much independence back as possible. I hope. I'll be able to get up to the toilet whenever I need with enough strength. I hope I'll be able to eat without all this nausea vomiting. I hope I'll be able to live on my own independently again. I can't wait to hug and kiss and pet my cat and my drool. I hope I'll be able to drive again. If not, then I don't know. I don't know right now. I hate that this happened to me. I know. I know I was trying to be positive about it before, and yes, I still stick by it, you know? I gotta be positive somehow, but it's really, really, really hard. The last shift I worked was the first week of June. It was after that that I was in and out of the ERs. And then finally admitted, and the old story, I got my surgery done. I'm really glad I got my surgery because it's not the same old horrible pain. At least now I could control, or at least someone could help me control the pain, the nausea. It's hard because even though my upper body strength is strong when it's strong. It's also hard to compensate for my right leg that doesn't work and my left leg that is 
mobile to a degree and strong to a degree and it varies throughout the day so it's not 100% dependable. My family has been very supportive and I'm grateful for that. My dad, he works a full-time job and he was supposed to be planning for retirement. <laughs> and I was supposed to help him somehow. <laughs> that was my goal. <laughs> Before all this happened. <laughs> it breaks my heart that this is happening to him. Three years after. My mom passed. So, there's something I don't think I've mentioned is that my dad, ever since my mom passed, has been going to the cemetery every Saturday. And he still goes. So, what that means is he'll visit on Saturday, sometimes both Saturday and Sunday, and he'll come see me. And he might not be alone. He, he's probably my shortest visitor because he's not really the chatty type. But I feel cared by him. And then I've got my girlfriend who's been seeing me as often as she can, which is hard because she's, she's got her own health problems. She's the one who got me. This really cute little book. It's just a tiny fart diary. And it's made by the brass monkey. It's such a cute book. It's actually, I don't know, like a velvety cover. And <laughs> it's just really, really cute. I've already filled the first one. I actually, think it's, uh, it's gonna be where I document. My bowel movements, I guess, so I could keep an eye on them myself too. As I've said in my videos that I deleted, I've had a lot of people visit. I've had a lot of friends and colleagues visit, and that was kind of them because they didn't have to. I'm very thankful for every person that visited. And I'm sorry if I've hurt anyone. Of course, I've been trying to keep myself occupied when I'm okay and fairly stable and able to afford being bored. I wish I could go back to just being bored instead of having all this pain and nausea and stiffness. This is this is the second book of Mugao Sushi. It's a love series. Um, I was obsessed with the live action drama. Even if it's not perfect, I've watched it again and again so many times. I also have this little um, journal, this no little notebook that I am dedicating to learning Tagalog. I haven't filled it up yet. I haven't had the chance to fill it up yet, but it's been a long, a long-term goal of mine to learn Tagalog, but it's so hard. I find that because I grew up here in Canada and ever since I came here at the age of six, they've just been pushing French on us. It eventually came to a point where French was pretty easy to me to pick up on. I, I can't speak it like the way fluent people do, but it's easy for me to pick up on certain words and certain parts of the grammar, whereas Tagalog, it's actually more Spanish, and the grammar of Spanish just seems a bit foreign to me compared to, to French. But. I don't want to make excuses for myself anymore, and I really, 
want to learn this language because when I get better, when I get better, I hope that I could fly back to the Philippines and visit all of my girlfriend's family members and surprise everyone by speaking to Tagalog, even if it's broken, even if it's, even if it's a very low level, I still want to try. I remember nine years ago when I visited my girlfriend's house, I remember her mom tried teaching me in the morning because it was breakfast time. She taught me the phrase, kain na tayo, meaning, come on, let's eat. And I've never forgotten it. And if I could remember a phrase from nine years ago, I'm sure that I could learn more phrases that I could keep for the rest of my life. So, that's my goal. I also hope I could fly to Korea. And my aunt's a big, big hug because their support has been just, it was out of the blue. Um, and I was pushing away my twin aunt because she's quite religious and I'm not. And it felt like I had to be. So I was pushing her away. And then this happened and she's been my greatest, one of my greatest strengths. And emotionally supporting me. And reminding me that I'm loved. And then I got a huge surprise when she visited my third aunt. And my third aunt was singing for me in traditional Korean, like, folk kind of music, saying she loves me. And again, I am so thankful because I thought, I thought I don't have any family back home in Korea. I've had eight sessions out of 30 for radiation. And I look forward to finishing it. I've been doing a little countdown calendar that I hope I'll be able to post soon. It was supposed to be part of story number two. I used to visit the cemetery with my dad because I just didn't have the guts to go by myself. And I say that because whenever I would visit by myself, it was very hard. It's been three years, and I still, I still can't bear the thought of visiting that cemetery by myself. So, like a coward. And that's why I visited my dad. Because I felt stronger when he was there. Standing next to me, looking at photos of her where her ashes are. I did try to visit. I did try to have some bravery. Because I was trying to visit for Mother's Day, her birthday. You know, times like that, but it's hard. It's been hard. But I hope I'll be able to go back to visiting the cemetery with him again. I'll do my best to be strong so I could, I could go back to taking care of the people that I wanted to take care of. And so that I could go back to living my life. as normally as possible. I 
suspect I'll have a new normal by the end of all this. I was told I should give it like a year. I don't know where I'll be in a year. It's only been like, it's only been like two months now. But it feels so long. And I just can't wait to get the heck out of here. I do wonder where I'll be a month from now, half a year from now, a year from now. What will my new normal be? And how much Tagalog will I have learned? 